Hello to viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, I'm going to talk about server that are immersionally cooled, meaning you dunk the server in liquid. So why would you want to do that? Well, reality is very clear. Liquid is our future cooling of all data sensors. It will not happen overnight, but it will happen slowly, as in like four to five years, or maybe even 10 years, but it will happen to everything. So it's one of that. Now, how can you actually achieve that? There are three possible options at this point in time. Option number one, rear radiator. Easiest retrofit possible to any server. And the best advantage it gives you is that it improves your floor space efficiency, meaning how many server racks you can have, how many rows of server racks you can have, goes up exponentially. Meaning, uh, generally you cannot uh, you can just have AC and like cool the hell down of it, but your server still would be hot. Why? Because air is not a very good conductor. So, and consequence of that is like you could literally have racks of server where it's like one server is creating hot air, dumping it into another one, and that another server is like, dude, what the hell? Why the heck the temperature I'm receiving is already hot? Then it's like trying to cool itself down. Fan goes even more berserk. Then the air condition is like, bro, it's not you know, convecting efficiently enough. So that creates an issue. Uh, rear radiator solves that because it just puts a giant water-cooled radiator just behind the server and that's it. All the hot exhaust directly gets cooled at the, uh, you know, closest point possible. No modification on the equipment. It can be retrofitted and you, generally many supercomputers are using that. It's very cost effective. Then we come to direct chip cooling, which is the future simply because even with that air uh, radiator system, you are limited to how much power each socket can draw. Because again, at the end of the day, air is the one that's carrying the heat. Here, you are liberated from that limitation. So if you have liquid, you know, what we call uh, direct chip cooling, you can push that puppy, meaning you can go from, let's say, 150 watts to 250 watts or even 300 watts. You can literally uh, up the power output. And again, this is just the uh, CPU cooling, there are uh, better variants where you have RAM also cooled or chipset also cooled or the almost majority of the whole things that needs cooling is cooled. So that allows even more power. At, at that point in time, you can pack some serious amount of computational horsepower in a very close amount of space. But what if you need even more power? Because even in this, you still have some issues. For example, your VRAMs, your uh, basically, there are many things, unless the designer really spent time uh, trying to cool down everything, you will have a hard time, you know, finding it. And at that point in time, if you try to liquid cool everything, have copper pipe going to everything, cost will become too stupid. So you still need air fans and server fans are very expensive because they have to move a lot of air in order to take enough heat away and they do not have enough surface area. So whenever you are talking about power, you have to understand, they you, um, you know, unify it to units, or basically a rack, one U. So that's how they unify it. So generally we are limited to 50 kilowatt or 100 kilowatt if you're really pushing it in terms of air. Generally at 100 kilowatt it's like preferred to like, if you have only one and whole uh, room is like cooled for that one system, yeah, you can try to do that, but generally 50 is, people are like, at 50 they're like, to, I don't think it's viable to like, you know, cool it. In principle, you can do anything, but it's just like, at some point it's just like, everything is uh, overheating because you have to understand, motherboard itself is also a thing. It has copper trace it. It will heat up over time. So you need active fan cooling and all that jazz. So if you are pushing the power limit envelope from, let's say 50 kilowatts to 150 or maybe even 200, at that point in time, even direct chip cooling is not good enough. Because waste heat of like, you know, one or two percent may not be a big deal if your whole computer power consumption is one or two kilowatt. But if you have a rack that is consuming 200 kilowatt and you have one percent waste heat, that's more than enough to melt the server. That you have to understand that's like one or two kilowatts of waste heat. So you have to take care of that. And other than the core components, you also need to cool like, you know, VRMs, power supply specifically. Uh, so you need and chipset. I wrote it wrong. Uh, all those things require cooling. So that's why we figured out the idea. The third, the granddaddy option, you just dunk the server. So immersion cooling is the whole point. So you take the whole server, be mindful, whole server. It's not like a red chip. It's not like, you know, only this or that, the whole thing. You just take it, horizontalify it, dunk it. Take it from vertical, put it in a tub. That's all you're doing. And every single component gets cooled. And not to mention that, uh, not only it's getting cool, generally time, uh, majority of the time they will get temperature locked also, meaning everything will be in one homogeneous temperature, meaning let's say if things are running properly, if it's 50 degrees Celsius, that's it. Everything in your computer is at 50 degrees C. That's very awesome. So core, uh, that, and that's very good for every motherboard, every motherboard trace, every register, every choke, every capacitor, everything. So that's a very awesome thing. And you remove every single fan. If done correctly, again, sometimes they do not want to modify it, so they don't remove it. But if the vendor, basically the vendor and manufacturers are working together, they will remove every single fan. There won't be a fan even in power supply unit. Nothing, zero, nothing will be there. So 
what's the benefit of that well fan consume 20 percent of the nameplate energy meaning if you are saying hey this rack is like uh, this one new server is like let's say one kilowatt that means 20 percent of that power generally it would be spent just for the cooling fans the cooling fans on servers are not only idiotically expensive uh, they run at very high rpms and they consume a lot of power and they are also very polluters in terms of noise pollution they are the primary reason why there is so much noise in server rooms and that takes a lot of energy. If you remove that much power drop, like 20%, that alone, many people like shut up and take my money just for that. Because you are reducing the noise floor of your whole building, which would be easily at 80 decibel or maybe even 90 decibel to around background. It's just like you can talk. So very low noise, that's desirable. If you have people working there, which you will need people, you will need electrician working there, you would need uh, connection specialists who are doing the connection, you will need people who will swap out ports after things break down, because it does happen, not today, not tomorrow, but it will happen over time. So all those things uh, would be done far more effectively if there is not hellish noise around there and no dust issue. Dust is one of the things, even if you have clean room, because you have to understand if people are around there, dead skin cells. So that will create, and not to mention, because your fans are miniature jet engines, they will literally erode things. And you would be quite surprised how many things are just erodes away. It's just like, Phew. now again, it will not happen day one, but after five years, you were like, dude, this server was like, you know, in a completely clean room and every filter that could be there would be gunked up. You're like, how the heck that happened? That's the whole thing. So putting everything in a liquid removes noise, removes dust issue. And there is a consequence. You do need a roof crane, meaning your roof structure has to be redone. And uh, you have to do that for maintenance and accessibility person. And packaging count goes down, meaning you will go from like, let's say one, let's say you have one unit of land space, that land space could easily accommodate, let's say, uh, four servers, uh, you will go down to two servers. Like, Wait a minute, that's what's the point. Well, here's the deal you are supposed to do more work in per server if you are increasing the power draw. Basically, if your power draw is going from 100 uh, kilowatt to 200 kilowatt, you're supposed to do more with it. And in many scenarios, there are desirable outcomes. If you increase the density, you also improve the efficiency. Now, like, why the heck that's possible? Well, there are many um, GPUs that would love to work with GPUs that are next to them. Why? You can literally bridge them. You do not want to do that bridging system in an air-cooled system because air simply does not have enough oomph to carry all the heat away. In liquid column, you could literally have eight GPUs next to each other or maybe even 12 GPUs next to each other or maybe even 64 GPUs in one slot as in like a one to your system. That's flat out impossible in air system, but in liquid, especially in emergent cooling, that can be done, no problem. At that point in time, because you can literally copper connect each of the VRAMs, you will get a very large pool. Even if, uh, you know, a fault happens, everything else can like, you know, fail over safely without any issue. So that's a desirable thing. So you do have to understand on paper, your density is going down, but in practical reality, is going up and many times is going up exponentially in certain loads like rendering farms and things of that nature. It's going up exponentially. So you have to package uh, basically horizontally, not vertically. You are not like this, you're like this. Basically it's a tub, you're dunking it. That's, that's why all the designs are like this. Always you're dunking things. So that's the idea of immersion. Basically you solve uh, uneven heating, everything heats up very uniformly and people like that. Like every engineer, tell her, this is a component. It will be in one fixed temperature and everything will be in that one temperature, you're like, this puppy, uh, I will increase the warranty from two years to five years. That's the difference. If you can cool everything or maintain everything's temperature to one level, things last very long, exponentially long, if you can do that. So we have first option that is phase change, meaning you let it boil. So fluorocarbon based liquids are used, which generally have low boiling point, meaning around below 50 degrees Celsius, they will start to boil. So you'll dunk everything and it will start to boil. Now, once you boil it, it uh, will go into uh, what we will condenser. Now again, everything is happening in one unit, one rack. So ready, uh, basically condenser are just in that system. Basically these copper pipes, uh, they are connected to the building water and that building water is removing heat. That's allowing the final condensate. Like these are the ridges and it's condensing the thing. Again, you can connect it to something else or maybe you can connect, like this is the whole point. You have a tub, you put your computers here, liquid overflows it and everything boils off. The steam goes there, dumps the heat into uh, basically heat exchanger or condenser and that condenser is cooled by generally uh, building water. Building water can be cooled by either a wa chilled water loop if you have that, evaporative cooling if you have very cheap water or dry cooler if you are in India. So that's how you achieve two-phase cooling and it can achieve bonkers power level meaning you can cool like on one rack size unit you can cool around 250 kilowatt. That is so stupid that you have to special build components in order to even come close to that kind of power draw. 
that's like meaning if you are investing let's say you are a company that is like okay i'm investing in data center they can invest in this system and be damn sure for upcoming years not one or two years years that they will have enough thermal capacity it's like whoa sir rtx 5000 consumes so much power it's like bro chill we got this we got this from like you know few years ago we got this rtx 6000 consumes even more power it's like bro chill got this and everything remains cool not only the gpu the cpu the ram the power supply the vram the chipset everything the motherboard plate the capacitor this register everything remains cool so that's the whole point and this has like very good temperature stability because again if temperature goes beyond a point it boils off and circulations happen no pumps are required and uh, there is a consequence it is toxic because again uh, fluorocarbon not a good stuff so it has to be sealed again you will never have it like this and again there are alarms that will uh, buzz off if they it detects that there is oxygen there so it's supposed to be a gas tight seal but be mindful even if you worked in like things that are soldered properly soldered gas still leaks gas always finds a way to leak out so over time you have to refill them and companies are generally uh, advised every two year you have to refill so it does have like the fluid that is used is expensive and you have to keep refilling that benefit if you invest in this sort of system the power density that you can achieve will like remove everything on you know every doubt is like once you invest in it is like you will never have to worry about it's like ha huh, what if you had bit more cooling it's like the got this then we come to single phase what if you do not want to deal with toxic stuff or things that boil off and that requires like you know very uh, gas tight systems uh, hydrocarbon based uh, dielectric fluids are used generally mineral oils cousin not mineral oil exactly but is cousin but generally it would be hydrocarbon based itself and uh, basically you place the server in a tub you do not need gas tight chamber you just need a tub that's it and of course you will have a cover on top of it just for making sure the people don't drop into it uh, but that's it it's a tub that's it there is no uh, boiling and all how do you circulate it of course because you do not have uh, boiling action you have to use a pump that is circulating the thing and that uh, fluid will go to another heat exchanger from where you have to decide how you going to cool it you can have like uh, building water cooling and you will do the same thing evaporative cooling dry cooling existing chilled water loop that's up to you so uh, that's how it does now because it's not boiling off you can achieve 15 years of lifespan meaning again this fluid is far cheaper compared to the last one and it will last far longer so those are the benefit there are no boil off and it's far more cost effective meaning doing this system Uh, per unit of server it's will be cheaper far cheaper exponentially cheaper again gas tight chambers are not very cheap and not to mention every time you have to open it you have to give people uh, gas masks uh, not cheap and again again those are toxic stuff so you have lot of uh, rules regulation registrations and all that jazz that that will increase of the cost this is just like a tub a person can swim in it although not recommended but you can uh but it does sacrifice something the power output only goes to 200 kilowatt meaning one uh, tub can only handle 200 kilowatts power be mindful at this point in time you will have to actually talk to a company to even give you this kind of power level it's not like oh i'm putting the next uh, third ripper like put whatever the hell you want to it you will not achieve 200 kilowatt in one rack unless you have like custom build like of course there are companies if you are building a next super computer you will talk to the manufacturer and they will you know in, uh, increase the envelope if you demand it or if you are in like working in bitcoin mining of course you can then achieve that and this became very popular in a uh, bitcoin era everybody is like Dude, the primary energy waster is cooling if you can cool things efficiently far more efficiently than air this becomes a viable and this person is just putting the power supply into a power supply rack that's it now be mindful you can do this with water if you have really really good water filtration so like wait a minute wouldn't water shot it out no water is a really good dil- dielectric it's like to give you a context how good of a dielectric water is uh, you know power plants they have big as generators like 100 megawatt generators uh, the stator basically the puppy that is producing the power it's cooled by water because nothing else can take away the heat as efficiently as water uh, now for example it has around 11 kv or sometimes could even be higher 33 kv or like 5000 6000 volts or that's the minimum that i have ever found generally there are much higher voltage at that voltage level at that amp level water is the only thing that can sustain it oil will simply boil off at that point in time other fluids will simply poof out of existence so only water can cool it consequence they have filter on top of filter on top of filter to make sure the water is absolutely dielectric so basically you have to rem- uh, ro on top of ro with more ro with some extra ro that's how you will achieve that kind of uh, you know absolute purity and again rotor is cooled by hydrogen that's the most meta thing is like how you are cooling this power plant water what are you cooling electricity how you are cooling this rotor hydrogen 
It's like that's the ultra meta thing to say. So you can do that with water. Generally not recommended because you put any dead cell, human skin cell, done. Short circuit will happen because water is universal solvent. That's why. So what we can expect in the future? Well, reality is very simple. Every company that is dealing with data centers is trying to improve what we call power users efficiency or PUE. You will always see this factor nowadays, PUE. What does that mean? That simply means let's compare it to air system. So air cool system generally have power effic uh, use efficiency of 1.67. What does that mean? That simply means let's say your nameplate capacity is 10 megawatt, meaning you bought a server from a vendor, let's say Nvidia. And Nvidia is like, bro, this is the thing. It's like the thing is 10 megawatt. You're like, okay, I'm gonna budget for 10 megawatt electricity. No, you have to also figure out cooling. Uh, if you have 1.67, that simply means you have to pay for 16 megawatts of electrical bill. You are paying 6 megawatt of extra electricity just to cool the damn thing. Let that sink in. That 10 megawatt is making you money, so you are happy with it. But your 6 megawatt is not making you money, so you are not happy with it. You hate it. So that's the reason why everybody wants that number to be as close to as 1 as possible. Now, of course, there are some laws of physics or unless you are doing something where you're using that waste heat, you cannot achieve it uh, even one or below one. So practically it's always one. Now what about these immersion cooling? They have the best rating of 1.05. And again, that's exaggerated. It's actually lower than that, but numbers would have too many zeros. So I'm like 1.05. What does that mean? That simply means if you have a computer that is consuming 10 megawatt, you only need 11 megawatt. And again, that's exaggerated. It's even less than that. But again, because if the pumps uh, that are in the system, generally they are over redundant, meaning if the system is critical enough, they will have three pumps. And the idea would be like only two pumps will be working at any time. So if one fails over, another takes over. So you will not have that surge load issue where you're like, you know, the remaining pump is like going all out. It's like broke three. And all of them will work in a proper synchronous where it's like what A and B is working, B and C is working, C and A is working. It's done that way. So all the uh, motors are like really well lived. It's not like running 24 into 7 into 365 until I'm tired. No, it's like relax work six hours, seven hours, like depending on the ambient temperature, they would have figured it out. So that's why people love this idea of dunking the whole server. And every company that is working in server industry, be it Gigabyte, be it Asus, be it whatever, they are figuring out how to get this thing done. Because this number is too huge. Paying six megawatt of extra just for cooling, expensive. Nobody loves the environment, but everybody loves money. And you're gonna talk to a, let's say, Amazon data center executives like, bro, here's the deal, you're gonna make more money. It's like, how? you're gonna save money in electricity. They're like, shut up and take my money. And that's why this thing is becoming more and more popular. In next few years, this will become absolute. It will be like how we slowly switched from SSD to um, HDD to SSD without anybody noticing it. The same thing will happen here. And high quality heat that is being extracted here because it's like in a liquid format, it can be used for other things. Again, it's not a thing that will ever work in India because ambient temperature is ludicrous here. But uh, if you are in European countries, especially cold ones, you like to you have to spend energy for building heating. At that point in time, if that waste heat is doing that building heating thing, you're like, bro, at that point, your uh, power use efficiency is like a bit higher than one. So you can achieve that. So condition for secondary, uh, you know, in some conditions, it can be used for secondary purposes. That's up to you. And we all need more servers. And there is another aspect of making high density servers means the grand total space you need for everything. Basically, how much building area you need, how much uh, generator area you need, how much power supply you need, everything goes down dramatically if you can concentrate it enough. Benefit of that is like every uh, branch could literally have its own server because here's the, you can make server more concentrated but you cannot do anything about latency. So you can be like, hey, if from a cost point of view, putting servers are like, you know, awesome in Ireland because it's cold, it's cheap, everything's awesome. Here's the, latency can't be done. And if your competitor figures out, hey, you have server there, how about I put server, let's say you are talking about Indian markets, like I'm gonna put in Indian market because everything would be far lower latency. People like, dude, this service feels exponentially far more efficient. That's the whole point. So if you can have very high density server, that means the grand total thing can be packaged as small as like, let's say one shipping container, people will start to use this. Like render farm, send the file to render farm or have a render farm directly below your basement. People will pay, choose the basement because latency does matter. And many uh, corporation, many requirements, especially hundreds and uh, millions of small transactions, they're like, dude, put the server here itself. So that also becomes a next opportunity. Uh, if you can achieve like, you know, 200 kilowatts of power in one unit. So the future is fixed. It's gonna happen. How? Let's see over time. So this was my presentation on immersion cooling of servers. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it and enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.